This ship is currently capable of killing enemies in a single volley. That's incredibly impactful firepower. I'm Forrester, and in this video I'll be reviewing the Star Citizen ship, the Asperia Glaive. Star Citizen is currently in alpha testing with the Glaive as one of the flyable ships. She's described as a medium fighter, crewed by a single pilot. Largely, however, the Glaive carries two very large cannons with the ship built around that weaponry. For those who've seen other ship reviews on this channel, you'll recognise the usual format for this video. I've split into five sections, starting with a ship tour, assessing combat performance, reviewing handling and visibility, looking at the operating costs before finally summarising, and I've included timestamps in the video description to help navigate to each part of the review. And considering that over 80% of people who watch these videos aren't yet subscribed to the channel, be sure to subscribe to be notified of future videos. Part 1 Ship Tour And in line with many of the other single seat fighters, there's not a huge amount to add. Entrance to the glaive is on the underside of the front beneath the glass cockpit. There's a very unusual entry mechanism which takes you up into the cockpit itself. There's no internal space and no physicalised storage. Part 2 Combat Performance So, as alluded to in the introduction, the firepower offered by the two size 5 weapons is absolutely incredible, especially against smaller targets. That's further enhanced by two small size 1 weapons beneath the nose, and eight size 2 missiles with considerable damage potential. The weapons will give almost constant overheat warnings, but actually getting the weapons to overheat is quite difficult. That said, all of the weapons are on fixed hard points and built into the ship, so can't be swapped out. What that means is, when piloting the glaive, it's important to be incredibly precise with putting that firepower down on the target. But that's quite a good feeling, contrasting to the usual ballistic saturation technique seen on this channel. It's also very satisfying to be able to point the weapons, pull the trigger once, and watch the target evaporate. The weapons can be a little vulnerable, meaning that going into a prolonged engagement, it's helpful to have a clear idea of when to disengage, particularly because all of the meaningful firepower is in the fixed size 5 weapons, so if they're both shot out, it's probably worth heading home. The glaive is protected by two size 1 shield generators, which are okay, but the ship is also able to take quite a fair beating with parts seemingly shot off regularly, causing little to no impact other than repair costs. That gives the Glaive a survivable feel to it. The Glaive is comfortable in most combat scenarios, able to tangle with larger ships because of the heavy firepower, and able to take on any of the combat contracts available. Where the Glaive struggles a little more is with very manoeuvrable opponents, so aim to take out faster craft at range before they can get too close and run rings around you. All of that said, the firepower of this ship is incredible. Part 3 Handling and Visibility Sadly, things start to slip here a little for the Glaive. Visibility is generally good, but it's worth adding a couple of caveats to that. Firstly, it's necessary to look down some way in order to see all of the multifunction display screens, with only two of them naturally in the field of view. Or naturally for humans, anyway. Then there's the red HUD elements. I, I get it, Vandal ship, Vandal bad, red bad, etc. But actually, it makes it quite hard to distinguish between elements that are usually red, such as quantum drive destinations or enemy targets. All of that is unnecessarily difficult, simply for the all-red effect. Onto the engines, and the Glaive has fairly good straight-line speed. Acceleration and braking is a little on the heavier side, probably closer to a heavy fighter, but still very reasonable. But the Glaive is slow to change direction. That's a pretty cool thruster movement effect, as the thrusters gimbal around, but ultimately they're too weak to help the Glaive change direction quickly. 
Moreover, as you reach gimbal limits, the translation often gets a sharp break, which gives the glaive a very jittery feel to it. Sadly too for the glaive, the usual method of counteracting many of these conditions by providing boost doesn't work quite so well due to the limited output of the thrusters. So all in all, that encourages you to fight at range. In an atmosphere, the story isn't much different. The glaive can reach reasonable speeds, the wings don't impede flight, but equally, it's slow to turn. Speaking of the wings, pilots will want to be careful of them when landing. The landing gear deployment is a really nice effect, coming from underneath the weapons, but because the cockpit is further back from the gear, it's quite easy to be far too far forward when landing and catch the wings. Finally, the quantum drive, as might be expected, is slow and also has fairly limited range. Limited range in this context being just below the fuel required to go from Herson to Port Olisar without a stop. Part 4 – Operating Costs So, the costs in the glaive can actually add up. Between repairs and rearming the missiles, it's not unreasonable to expect costs up into maybe a couple of thousand alpha UEC. Fuel is usually a little cheaper, which is good because the glaive is quite a heavy drinker of both quantum and hydrogen fuel. That said, the glaive can make up those costs by running combat missions. Pretty much any combat mission. Because of the firepower offered by the size 5 cannons, the glaive can comfortably tackle anything you throw it into, including claim jumper missions from range. With a little practice, it's possible to string together all nine of the sentries before moving on to the prospectors for a call to arms bonus. And that's good, as sadly there aren't many other mission options for the glaive, which has no cargo storage, no internal storage, and no internalized space for cargo or crew. Part 5 – The Verdict The Glaive, when it's available, comes in at $350, and not at all in-game for Alpha UEC currently. I say when it's available because this thing has very limited availability in the store, rarely sold and in quantity limited sales when it is. Is it worth the price? Absolutely not. Don't get me wrong, this is a very powerful fighter, and pound for pound packs an incredible punch, but the price is just crazy. That's the same as the original price for the Banu Merchantman, or the Endeavour, or the Hull D, or any of the multi-crew constellation variants. And that's really the problem, there's more value for money on pretty much anything else in the pledge store. But it's rare. I don't think this is a ship you buy for value for money, this is something you buy because nobody else has it, because you can put a story behind it, and perhaps that's a little more compelling. If you found this review helpful, you may also be interested in my review of the Esperia Prowler. Please also subscribe if you'd like to see future Star Citizen content, and check out the video description for details of my active Star Citizen organisation. Thank you for watching.